Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Again, I will ask you if you would please like, share, and or comment on the post. I would be extremely grateful for that. And then if you like, you can follow along with me in the book of Galatians, the third chapter, beginning in the 19th verse. Paul says, Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Uh, I recognize this morning that uh, many times uh, what uh, what Paul writes can um, seem to kind of uh, run in circles a little bit and be a little bit uh, difficult to understand. And and I agree. I I, I I'm with you. I see the same thing, and I'm uh, thankful for uh, for good books and scholars who have uh, sorted this out and uh, helped make it uh, clearer for us. And uh, that's uh, what I'm trying to do this morning as well. Just uh, make it a little clearer, um, make it a little more accessible. And so let's uh, tackle this passage uh, where Paul is. Uh, offering up uh, another reason why we are justified by faith. And his reason simply uh, is that the law uh, doesn't have the power to be able to justify us. It doesn't have, uh, again, the, the ability uh, to cleanse our sins and to make us uh, acceptable um, to God. Now, there were people there in the Galatian church um, who were, were teaching uh, that people became acceptable to God, uh, entered into a relationship with God uh, when he does the very best he can, uh, when he tries uh, all that he can to obey the law, um, when he is religious uh, when he uh, goes to the temple, when he kept all the uh, the rituals, the ceremonies, uh, all those things that are laid out in the Old Testament, um, and has went through the uh, submitted himself to the various um, uh, rules of the rituals of the church, circumcision being uh, a main uh, main one. Uh, church membership, baptism, whatever it is uh, that they're following uh, the rules uh, of the church. And what Paul is saying here, he says, yes, those things are important. Uh, and, and we should be um, as obedient as we can to the law, to the rules, uh, practicing religion, um, as it's described in Scripture, uh, that we should do those things. What Paul is not uh, suggesting that um, we should just take uh, all the Old Testament law and and, and throw it in the garbage can. Uh, not at all. Uh, we, he's saying we should do those things, but what he's saying is that even doing those things uh, they don't justify a person. Those things do not uh, cleanse a person from their sin, uh, that only Christ can do that, that we can't do anything um, on our own. No amount of effort, no amount of work um, can, can cleanse us, can uh, make us acceptable to God only um, through Jesus Christ. Uh, when a person believes in Christ, puts their faith uh, in Christ, uh, confesses him as Lord, then they become acceptable uh, to Christ. There are a lot of people um, who, are, who spend a lot of uh, time, energy, strength, really devote themselves to trying to follow the rules. Uh, being good church people, going to church, carrying their Bible to church, 
uh, singing in the choir, teaching a Sunday school class, whatever, mowing the churchyard, doing all those things. Don't cuss, don't drink, um, don't go with those who do, uh, you know, those kind of things. But uh, but they don't believe, they don't trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, and, and that's what Paul is talking about here. They're, they're very religious people. Um, again, they, 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 they love the church. They'd fight for the church. But they don't know Christ as their Savior. Uh, maybe they've been baptized. Maybe they've joined the church. Uh, maybe they, you know, went to RAs and GAs and sing in the choir and go to WMU and Brotherhood and, you know, all those things that you can do inside the church, but they still don't know Jesus. And he says those things, just the simple effort that we put forth on our own will not make us acceptable uh, to Christ. And so he says, how do we know that? How, how do we know that the law doesn't make a person uh, acceptable for God? And he says, because it wasn't given for that purpose. He says, the law was given uh, to let us see our sin. Uh, the law was given to show us uh, who uh, who we are uh, to show us um, uh, what what we are doing wrong it wasn't given to us to make us righteous it was given to make us aware that we are unrighteous uh, it wasn't given to take away our sin it was given to show us uh, our sin. Uh, as Paul would write later, um, he, he would uh, say, you know, I was going along, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, basically, uh, I was checking off the Ten Commandments, and man, I was rolling. I was doing good. Uh, you know, I, I was, and then I got down to the very last one, and says, thou shalt not covet, and when I got to that one, I realized I was guilty of all of them. Uh, that's what the law does. The law reveals and shows us uh, our sin. When we go down, for example, the Ten Commandments uh, and, and look at those, I, you know, I don't see how anybody can look at those and say, well, I hadn't broken any of them. You know, I've never lied. I've always honored my father and mother. Never, never talked back to my mom or daddy at any point in time. I've always honored the Sabbath. You know, I don't think any of us in, in, in our right mind could say we've never broken those. The, the law shows us that we are a sinner. Uh, why the law? It was added because of transgressions um, until the offspring, we've talked about that, until the promise would come. Who's the promise? The promise is Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and so the law was just there to reveal uh, who, uh, who we are, reveal uh, our sin to us. And, and and again, it does a, a very good job of that. Uh, you don't even have, again, you don't have to read the whole Old Testament. Uh, you don't even have to read all ten commandments, most likely, before you realize I'm guilty. And that's what the law does. The law shows us we need a savior. When we, you know, one of the things I've used over the years uh, in, in witnessing is to say to somebody, "How many lies do you have to tell before you become a liar?" Well, one. How many things do you have to steal before you become a thief? One. Um, how many? So then, how many? How many sins do you have to commit before you become a sinner? One. And so the law shows us that, points us to the fact that we need a savior. And today, if you know Jesus Christ as your uh, Lord, if you've accepted him as your Savior, you look back at that law and say, thank God I am free. I have been saved. I have been forgiven. I have been cleansed and made right with God. But if you don't know him today, you look at that law and it says, I'm guilty. I need a Savior. And uh, if that's where you are today, by the way, if you look at that law, look at those Ten Commandments, and realize I'm guilty. I broke them. Uh, and, and therefore, I am a sinner. Uh, I'd love to talk to you and tell you today how you can know Christ, how you can be saved, how you can be forgiven and uh, stand right before God. Law can't do it, but Jesus Christ can. You'll see my contact information uh, as this scrolls at the end. I uh, would love to hear from you. If you'd like to talk about how you uh, can know Jesus Christ. All right. You have a great day. We'll see you here tomorrow morning.